This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jai Courtney. I feel like you, when you say it, it's much more interesting than when I say your name. Jai Courtney? Yeah. It's got a little bit more pizzazz with the accent. All right, there you go. Um, who is uh, now starring in Insurgent. Uh, you've got Terminator Genesis coming up, about to start filming Suicide Squad. So uh, you're a pretty, pretty busy guy these days. The first thing I wanted to ask you about, though, was... Um, in terms of playing a villain and playing a hero, because you seem to fluctuate between those two. I mean, Die Hard Hero, Jack Reacher Villain, Insurgent, and so on and so forth. Terminator's Hero as well. Um, or is it? Yeah, exactly. I guess theoretically, I don't know that for sure. Um, wanted to play some best villain. <laughs> yeah, you're probably so. But uh, what is it like <clears throat> in terms of that as an actor? And is there one that you enjoy more than the other? Because I could see like villains being really fun to go crazy, but everyone loves yeah. heroes. and it's funny, I used to, I think when I first started working, I thought it was very important to, um, you know, define what that meant and and uh, and sort of stay within the lines and play by the rules and all that sort of thing. And I, I remember doing Jack Reacher and being like, man, this dude's pretty dark and thinking like I had to follow it up with something very likable. Um, and I think the further away I get from that, the less... I've, I mean, that, that that strategy never really came into play, to be honest. It just, things have rolled out the way they have, and uh, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, uh, villains are a lot of fun to play. Do I want to play bad guys every time I do a movie? Of course not. Um, but, you know, it's cool if you can kind of incorporate a bit of both. I mean... Well, I think that's what Suicide Squad really is going to hit upon, because, I mean, that is... Yeah, I think you. Yeah, you're there. probably right. It is the sort of the perfect marriage in a way. Um, so I'm, you know, yet to go and do that, obviously. But uh, but yeah, you've got a bunch of super villains kind of playing antiheroes. Um, so it's uh, yeah. I mean, it is great when you can kind of um, meld those worlds together a little. Uh, and I mean, you know, playing a I, I, look. None of the characters I've played have really been like I guess nice guys so much. Um, well, I don't know that that's even in my wheelhouse. Uh, I once lost a job because I had a bad guy face, <laughs> apparently. Um, that's an actual thing, though. Like, I remember literally just talking about that while watching TV with my girlfriend the last right. week. And we're just like, oh, she's, just, she's got that evil face. She's like, got that, that she's yeah, there's like, bitch face. Some people just have it. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it is kind of like that. And, look, I think it, I would, look, if someone said to me, in the next 20 years, you'll reach a point where you're only ever cast as like, you know, the creepy, evil rapist dude. Then, you know, I'd be pretty upset by that because um, you want to stretch yourself. I mean, you probably would limit your roles potentially as it well. Might. Oh, maybe it might. Maybe lifetime movies but, would be. But that's a very real thing for some people, you know. Oh, for sure. And there's some people that just play great villains all the time. And look, it's like you can't take anything away from them. It's like you, you do that, something that, well. The beautiful thing about that too is though when they go against type, like Gary Oldman. Gary right. Oldman's a phenomenal villain. But when he's like a good guy like Gordon, Commissioner Gordon or somebody like that, you're like, holy shit, this guy is like really – Totally. Crazy. But, you know, he's never going to take like, you know – well, he, uh, I, I'm, I'm not even going to begin to say what roles Gary Oldman's going to take or not. He, I'm sure he's in control of that. <laughs> he's doing all right. Yeah, he's all right. So uh, one of the other things I want to ask you about is – and. <laughs> This is speaking from somebody who has never read any of the Divergent. You're already embarrassed before you ask yeah. the question. I, I feel like there's going to be some implication that I have. If people want right. to believe that, okay, they're assuming I read it. It's all right, I haven't idea. either. Um, what is it like in terms of being in like that young adult novel franchise area? I mean, like, you know, Twilight's obviously blowing up. Insurgent, divergent. Yeah, Twilight's just blowing up. Welcome to the party, yeah, exactly. mate. But, <laughs> but like, there's so much fandom around. The yeah, scene. I guess Harry Potter before then, went right? Too. But there's so much fandom. Do you like get the feedback from that as an actor? Like, people just constantly like you're an asshole on Twitter or something like that, just because you take these roles and these iconic franchises. I mean, probably a little. I, I the social media thing is something that I I really struggle to. Uh, to adopt, I think I, I like. I just started an Instagram account, account uh, a few months ago officially because I mean it was mostly driven by the fact that I was I was alerted to the fact someone was pretending to be me, which is very common. But I was really pissed off that they weren't doing it too well, you know. Yeah, that's the worst thing. And they had a few thousand followers, and I was like, the, like this person's making me look like a douchebag. 
I would never, I don't eat that shit and they're posting it. And I was like, I got to like, if I'm going to complain about this, I got to control that space. Um, but it's work. It doesn't come naturally to me. And I mean, you can't ignore the significance of those communities. Um, you know, especially in reference to, uh, to the fandom. And I mean, it's a huge, uh, you know, support network for these projects and it's how people are communicating these days. And you can kind of say whatever commentary you want about that and, you know, the shape that it's left, uh, relationships in and, and how our youth kind of, you know, do engage with one another. But that aside, it is a, an important part of uh, promoting movies and, and keeping the fans in touch with it. So uh, that's something I probably need to work on a little more and uh, and become a little more aware of. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, it doesn't – I guess in that sense, my naivety uh, has kind of left me to conclude that I don't really know if it's, you know. Well, you have an interesting sort of perspective too because, I mean, a lot of the major stuff you've done at been at least somehow connected to franchise Jack Reed yeah. theoretically with yeah, yeah, yeah. Pad for one. This is a franchise. Terminator is a franchise, even though it's sort of like a reboot, reimagining or whatever. When I signed on for Suicide Squad, Miles Teller sent me a text and said, Bro, you don't need to do a franchise at every studio. Uh and <laughs> he's absolutely right. It's that's, um, that's probably like actually even a scarier potential. Yeah, it is. That's, that's not just a franchise. That's like an entire world. Like you look at the Marvel universe and it's like this person's in eight different Marvel. Like how many has Robert Downey Jr. been? Like eight to ten movies. Yeah, it's all right. When he's banking 80 million off the back of an Avengers yeah, so box if, office. If, so if that's your strategy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that Miles Teller is like you don't need to do another one as he's just. As he's about to jump in a Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah, I know. He can talk. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's that's I mean that's. That's, that's kind of the way things are and it's yeah would I love to be on the festival circuit and like in every great little indie you know that's happening sure am I getting those opportunities no and it's like I can I can be patient and strategic and really try and push that and make it work um you know but there's also uh, some some security I guess and, and some comfort in the fact that this action thing seems to be working out and I'm having a lot of fun doing it and, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I thought at a point that I wanted to turn my back on that and no more franchise movies and all this shit, but it's kind of like, yeah, well, why? I mean, what difference does it make? You know, if you, if you kind of, if I'm lucky enough to be working for a start, which is something we very easily forget. Um, oh, and, totally. You know? And one of the interesting things actually about this movie is, is this the first sequel you've done? Like you've been in a lot of franchises. Yeah. But you haven't. This like, is the first second installment. On to be yeah. Like that. Well, normally I die in the first movie. <laughs> hey, you know, like you, you did pretty well in Die Hard. Yeah. Like, who knows what's going to happen there? Like, <laughs> it's like about bringing back Indiana Jones like every five years. Fuck. Die Hard could go on for five I, years. I, got, I must make a deal with myself at some point that there is no, I mean, I'm going to say it now on the record Suicide Squad is the last franchise I sign on to. Well, I mean, how many films did they make you commit to when you signed? Three. So there, there's probably at least a minimum of three films. That's all right. And when you're making eighty million dollars a film, by the last one, I don't know if you're. Gonna yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Um, but what was it like in terms of like your preparation in this film? I mean, I guess a lot of the films you haven't known everyone when you began filming it. This right. one, you knew everybody probably yeah. coming into it. You knew sort of the story. You were part of the beginning of it. Like, I think that? that's that was the real blessing with uh, with doing this. And I didn't really figure that out until we were out there um, because, I mean, I was I shot this simultaneously with Terminator and was totally wrapped up in, uh, in doing that film. It demanded a lot more of me preparation-wise and, uh, and also just with the schedule. Um, and in fact, the only eight, days I had off on the Terminator schedule I was out in Atlanta doing Insurgent um, so it was kind of gnarly in that sense but what I realized when I got out to the Insurgent set after the kind of I mean there was this initial panic of like shit I don't, I don't remember what the hell I'm doing with this role <laughs> and all this stuff and then you realize that it's kind of like no you you totally do and, and yeah in a way and it was like really easy to kind of just slide in and uh, and and have fun again with these these people that you're incredibly comfortable working with, and it's like everyone's got such a firm grip on who their characters are that well, it's just like you can have more fun like with it. Method 
portion of it where like the good guys all hang out together and the bad guys all hang out together or like did you need anything to like psych you up to be like yeah i want to like fucking eliminate all these people like i want to massacre them. not really not really it all just it's it, you know you just leave it all on the on, on the screen man um, no, it's not the most transformational set when it comes to character development. Everyone's pretty real. Uh, we all get along. We're all really good friends. Um, so it's pretty easy to just kind of hang out and shoot the shit and, you know, go to craft service and have a cup of coffee and then slip into a scene and like, you know, put a gun to someone's head. Um, so yeah, that's how we do it. Was it challenging at all going back and forth between this and Terminator? Like switching off like, I'm the good guy in this one, or I'm the bad guy. I mean, it's I mean, look, a, a little, but it was it was more about the technical stuff that was at play. I mean, I think jumping between the two uh just kind of it, it it wasn't that hard. It's funny because you because this felt like it was something I knew so well already. Um it's like muscle memory and you're just kind of back in there. Uh, you know, and there's certainly a lot that separates Eric from Kyle Reese. So I, I didn't find myself uh, acting like uh, one oh, or the Kevin other. There's a whole other complicated issue of like that's been played by at least two other people that I'm aware of. Like, is it difficult to try and like put your own spin on a character where it's like it's fucking Michael Bean? What are you trying to do with Michael Bean? Honestly, and I mean, it's I mean. I guess there is that pressure, but I've just found a way to fucking not deal with it. You know, I don't, I mean, there's no, well, yeah. I mean, what's the point? You can't, I think it's different if you're stacking things up really closely. I mean, I'm not going to uh, dare to kind of uh, draw a comparison between, you know, uh, how iconic something like the Joker is, for instance, to a Kyle Reese. However, it's like that's a role that's been played by a bunch of different dudes. And it's like, now, do we think like they all topped each other? Perhaps some are better than others, you know. Jared's about to go do it in Suicide I, I Squad. I do not envy that guy. Like, well, yeah, it's like we, we can do it. But he's going to be amazing because he's going to do his own thing. And by the time that's done, we'll forget about the fact that it's like an uphill battle to try and, you know, up Heath Ledger, for instance, or whatever. Um, and I think, you know... Uh, the idea of that is much crazier to people than than what's actually in reality, you know. I, I feel like at least Carl Reese, there's a little bit more of a box to like define him yourself. Whereas like it's just like you better not fuck up like what Heath Ledger did or something. Yeah, I th yeah, I think yeah, mate, yeah, you know, perhaps you certainly have those foundations. But you know, if I go back and watch like Cameron's first Terminator movie, there's not a lot Maybe. in like Michael Bean's performance that's going to inform what I'm going to do in this. I mean, really. It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's cool for a reference point, but am I going to go try and emulate that? No. How weird is that? Like, I mean, I don't know your exact age, but I would say you're probably what? 30? I don't know. Have a stab. Like, uh, let's say 34. Wow. I'm looking old. I don't know. I'm guessing somewhere in the, the 20s. I'm, I'm 29 in a couple okay, of weeks. 29. Okay. Um, what, like... Is, is it weird to be in a film that, I think the first Terminator came out before you were born. Yeah, 84. So, is it weird to be like, this is a film I grew up in and now I'm going to be in this film? I guess Die Hard is pretty close to that too. Die Hard was a bit like that, yeah, too. Um, yeah, yeah, it is kind of, but uh, but it's pretty dope at the same time, you know. Pretty fun. Um, I guess I'll wrap this up. Uh, you've got Insurgent coming out here, was it 316, I believe? Is that correct? Um You've got Terminator Genesis coming out this summer. July 1st, July yeah. July 1st. And now you're about to start filming uh, Suicide Squad. Anything else that we should keep our eyes peeled for? Keep you? your eyes peeled. Uh, the Water Diviner is dropping out here. Uh, I'm not sure how wide the release is, but it's the uh, film I did with Russell, oh, Russell Crowe oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that he directed. That's coming out April 14, I want to say. Um, uh, yeah. And, you know, if you search around uh, under my uh, porn pseudonym, you might find some uh, special releases in the fall. Uh, any uh, social media or whatever that you can verify is actually yours? I just, I, all, all I have is an Instagram okay. account. So yeah. Twitters are fake, Facebooks theoretically are fake, all that stuff. There's no Twitter, no Facebook that's mine. So identity thieves. <laughs> They're out there. You go? There's yeah. Just do it better <laughs> if you're going to do it. As long as you're going to do it, do just it Just do it well, yeah.
perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ryan. Spencer. I look forward to seeing what you do next. Cheers, mate. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sign of stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.